The engine is the beating heart of your aeroplane. Precision engineered, they're designed to run smoothly for thousands of hours. However, there is a lot that goes into keeping the temperatures and the pressures in the green. Airplane engines come in all different shapes and sizes, from inverted four-cylinder gypsies to horizontally opposed six-cylinder injected Lycomings. And when it comes to their maintenance, it's often best left to the professionals in the proper facilities like this one here at Tur Western. But there's lots that we can do to look after our engines. When an engine comes off the production line for the first time or out of a fresh overhaul like this aeroplane's engine has, you have to run it in. And although the manufacturer's operating manual should be consulted on how to do that for that specific engine type, as a general rule of thumb, engines should be run in on straight mineral oils for at least the first 50 hours or until engine oil consumption stabilizes. There's a general misconception that an aeroplane's engine needs to be handled gently during the braking stage. Now this isn't necessarily true. In order for the engine's piston rings to seat correctly, it has to be brought up to temperature. Running your aeroplane's engine at about 70-75% is advised, and once it's there and brought up to temperature, it should stay there for a little while. And during that time, avoid climbing to higher altitudes and thinner air. So, though we don't want to mollycoddle our engine, it's also important not to thrash it too much in the initial stages. Don't forget, we want to bring the engine temperature up to a standard gradually, but then we also need to allow it time to cool down at a consistent rate as well. So let's have a look at the general makeup of a typical light aircraft engine. This is a Lycoming, it's a four cylinder, horizontally opposed engine, which means that the cylinders are on either side of the main body as opposed to vertically inlined or in V configuration. Front of the engine is there where the propeller mounts to. We've got the dipstick at the back here, the vac pump, oil pump, magnetos, mechanical fuel pump, and the cylinders are here. They've got this combing on them to aid with engine cooling. Spark plugs, the valves sit behind these rocker covers and essentially that's it. So I'm joined by Colin Winter from Aki Aviation. Colin, thanks for joining me. You're and we're just going to talk a little bit about engines really and trying to give some of the people watching an idea of how they can best look after their engine. Uh, I know that there's a, a general misconception that mollycoddling an engine too much is really, really bad for it. Is this the case? Absolutely. Um, the harder you are on an engine, the better it is for the engine because it keeps basically the parts bedded in. So you want the pistons and the rings to bed into the cylinder. So if, if you molly coddle it, it's not like an old sort of 40s car where you have to run it in for a sort of like 40 hours at sort of 20 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. You know, you do that with an aircraft engine and you'll just ruin it. How come an aircraft engine is different then to an automobile? Well, for a start, they rev a lot lower. So remember, I mean, when you're flying, you're running at what, 2,500 RPM? What would a car be running at? You know, at the same sort of, if you like, uh, an average, probably about, what, 5,000 RPM. Mm. So, you know, there's a whole lot of difference. They're, they're slow turning engines, hence the reason why they need to be kept bedded in. So those are important, obviously, as your first point of call to consult the aircraft or the engine manufacturer's documents. As a general rule of thumb, when you're trying to run in an engine, you've got to be pretty much thrashing it and working it hard. Yeah, every manufacturer has a, a bedding in procedure, which obviously, you know, I mean, they insist that you follow. But the, the first 10 hours, you need to be what you would class as like hard on it, mm. because the harder you are on it, the longer it will last and the better it will bed in. Mm. And you'll find that by the oil consumption, then it'll start going up. And for folks that are watching, if you could give them one piece of advice, what would it be? If you don't fly it, the one thing that people do is that they have got this misconception that if they go up to their aeroplane about once a fortnight and turn the prop over a couple of turns, that it's doing its good. And it's not. 
it's doing the exact opposite because when an engine's run, you've got a mist of oil inside the engine and that mist of oil will go everywhere. So now that will stay. When it gets up to stay. temperature. Yeah. Yeah, right. So that will stay in there, it will go in the cylinders. So when you go over on a cold engine and you turn the prop over, what you've now done is scrape all that oil off. So now you've got nothing. Uh. So now you've got the beginnings of corrosion. I'm going to go and uh, heat up my engine because I'm guilty of doing that. <laughs> Lots of people are guilty of it. And that's what they say, is if you're not going to use it, then start the engine, bring it up to temperature and give it a good ground run. And, and that will then make the oil atomize and then you'll get the mist inside. And then that will keep the thing, you know, corrosion free. And we're in the middle of the summer months now, but um, during the winter months, what's the, uh, one last thing we'll talk about is what's the importance of inhibiting your engine if you know it's going to be on the ground for a prolonged period of time and after how long a period of time should elapse before people consider inhibiting their aircraft? Well, engine? they say if it's going to be out of use for um, up to around three months and over, then you should inhibit it. Um, and inhibiting oil is, again, it's a film that is like more sticky than, than like ordinary engine oil. So again, what it's doing is it's coating everything. So it, again, it's there to protect and stop the corrosion. That's the biggest killer on all aircraft engines is corrosion. Colin, thanks very much for talking to me. You're more welcome. Regularly running the engine is really important to prevent rust and corrosion forming on the inside and you should try to fly your airplane as regularly as possible. If you can't though, say over winter months, you should consider inhibiting the engine and this isn't a particularly time consuming or expensive task. You don't have to wait for the aircraft's six monthly check or annual inspection to change the oil. Don't forget the engine oil's job is to lubricate but also absorb toxins and corrosive chemicals. In changing the oil, you remove all of these nasties out of the engine. Next time, we'll be looking at the multitude of different avionics and instruments that are available to the pilot of today, from the bare minimals in airplanes like the Tiger Moth here to cutting edge glass cockpit technology in the light sports aircraft behind us. But anyway, for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>